All right, Meta just released Llama 3.2, its newest large language model at their Meta Connect conference today. It's been a wild last three days, right? We've seen the uh, Apple intelligence beta from Apple. We just saw yesterday ChatGPT's advanced voice mode and, and Gemini 1.5 updates from Google. So now we have Llama 3.2. So stick with me for, I don't know, five to 10 minutes. I'm gonna go over quickly what's new, uh, what's different with 3.2 versus 3.1, uh, and also hopefully show you how you can download uh, a version of 3.2 to test out on your own machine. Yeah, it is an open source model. All right, let's do a very quick overview. So if you're new here, thanks for joining. My name is Jordan Wilson, and I'm the host of Everyday AI. So we're a daily live stream podcast, free daily newsletter, helping everyday people learn and leverage generative AI to grow their companies and careers. So if that sounds like you, Please subscribe to this channel. Let me know in the comments what you want to see more of. All right, let's get straight into it. So Llama 3.2, here's the two big things you need to keep in mind, aside from the fact that Llama is open source. So yeah, Meta Llama open source. So we'll say that's one. Number two, multimodal. All right, so 3.2, that means the ability uh, for the model to be able to see. So you can upload photos and uh, it will be able to see. So computer vision, the same way that you can do that inside of the other big large language models, uh, ChatGPT, Claude, and Gemini, right? Technically Copilot as well, but that uses the GPT technology. Uh, so the same thing now that you have with Llama. So they are finally, even though they're the only open source out of those other ones that I just talked about, now they're kind of fighting on the same playing field. Uh, so pretty big news there. The other big thing about uh, 3.2, so we talked about multimodality. The other one is Edge, Edge AI on device, right? So uh, the new 3B and 1B models uh, are essentially for phones. And I think that we're gonna eventually see them in a lot of Meta's hardware, right? So uh, we have the uh, Meta Ray-Ban collaboration. Uh, we have the uh, the new uh, MetaQuest headset. So, you know, I think that you're gonna see a lot of these uh, models rolling out all over the place, phones, etc., right? Because they're open source. So that means that anyone can go build on top of them uh, and, you, you know, essentially you, you kind of credit Llama, right? But you can build on top of Llama. It's very open source. Uh, you, you know, you can fork it, you can distill, you can do all of these different things that you can't do with a closed uh, proprietary model. Uh, so, you, you know, it's much more obviously developer friendly. So I do see the 1B and the 3B models being used in a lot of different use cases for Edge AI. Uh, it might be the uh, early leader. I know that Google uh, has their Gemma uh, models as well. So let's go over very quickly some of the specs. Um, and then I'm going to hopefully show you how you can download uh, at least one of these 3B and 1B models. I don't think that uh, my device is going to be able to handle uh, the 90B or the 11B. So I'm going to quickly show you uh, once we go over the specs how you can download uh, some of these edge models and test them out. All right, so real quick, this isn't gonna be a super dorky uh, benchmark, but let's at least look at the big ones here. Uh, so the difference here is normally we'd be looking at MMLU. Uh, so here we are looking at MMMU. So think of that, it's, I like to say MMLU is kind of like the ACT for large language models. This is the visual version of the MMLU, the MMMU. All right, so the bigger model, 90B, and actually, you know what? Let me hit pause on that. Here's, here's the other thing I got to call out. You have to think there's another big model coming. All right, here's why. Let's look at this 11, 11B and 90B. Those are the billions. Uh, how many billions of parameters are in the model? So if you look at 3.1, Meta actually followed the same uh, kind of release schedule. So first, they released an 8B and 70B. So let's look at here. This, in theory, would be the small and the medium, right? So we have the small, the 11B multimodal, and the medium, the 90B multimodal. So same thing, Meta, last time, they first announced the 8B and the 70B, and then uh, about two months later, I believe it was, then they came out with a big boy, the 405B. So uh, I, I do believe that Meta, we will be seeing probably a 500 billion plus uh, parameter model, right? Uh, for comparison, the GPT-4 uh, family of models, I believe, are 1.8 trillion, uh, so even bigger. So I do see uh, that probably coming, a 500 billion parameter model. Uh, 
Um, I still have to read through all the fine print. I don't think they announced that yet, uh, but if they have announced that, I'll update this video. All right, so now let's go back into this into the uh, the benchmarks because pretty good here. So keep in mind, this is the the medium model. Uh, a 60.3 on the MMMU. Uh, and then if we look like, where does that bench them right now? So if we look at MMMU, that's quad three Opus territory, right? Not quad three, five Sonnet, but the original big boss from Claude, this is a closed model and it is benching above there uh, and much closer to uh, Gemini 1.5 Pro right now. So for an open sourced model that is moderate in size, right? That's not a huge model, uh, a 90 billion parameter model. It's fairly impressive benchmarks. I think that there's one thing and that's probably uh, maybe an advantage of being an open source model uh, is you put all your code out there. People are going to, you know, find improvements, find ways to, to, to better make the model run, right? So pretty impressive there. All right, let's go in. Let's see if we can download this. All right. And let's see if we can run it. Maybe do a little testing. So you can download it uh, from llama.com. You can download this on, uh, I, I believe it's on GitHub and Hugging Face, all the usual places. I personally like just running it on Olama. All right, I don't have a super powerful computer. That's the other thing. When you're talking about running a model uh, like Llama, you either have to use a third party, uh, third party interface. Uh, so as an example, uh, let's see, I think we have Jan AI, uh, so there's, there's a couple other ones, right? So you can use like a third party interface like this, where you're essentially downloading some software. I, I, I love the simplicity of Olama. So I did a video before, uh, you literally just click this. Okay. You click this, you download it for your operating system and then I'm on a Mac. So again, my computer is probably not going to be able to handle these big, right? Like the 405 B model. I tried that. It doesn't do very well. So when you're downloading these models, you are limited by the power of your device right? Um, so when you, when, when you talk about like the newest phones and things like that, they're actually probably better than my computer. I'm on a, uh, I'm on a Mac mini, uh, M two from like 2023, I think. So not the most powerful computer, but I do know it's at least powerful enough to run, uh, some of these smaller models. So, uh, all you do, you download this, you run it locally, and then literally this is the easiest thing. And that's why I love, um, I love Olama. So I'm going to go to models. So, okay, go ahead. If you're following along, download this. The good thing is, and I'll show you this, you can run it all offline after you download the actual model. Um, so now I'm going to go into 3.2. So the good thing is all you do is you just click this and I'm going to copy this. All right. And then I know it's kind of small, but look up here. Uh, okay. I actually have to restart this obviously. So let's go ahead and, uh, restart Olama. So, uh, it then runs locally. Okay. So it looks like there was an update. All right. It's bouncing around. So hopefully this will launch. There we go. All right. So now we're good. So now all I do is open up terminal and then I run Olama from here. So what I think is going to happen, I'm going to this code right here. You just copy that in. I'm going to paste it and hit enter and it runs everything locally. So I believe it's going to have to download this. And also what's worth noting, this is not the multimodal model. This, all there is on this uh, right now for Olama is the one B and the three B, which is fine because I honestly think that's all I'm really going to be able to run anyways. Uh, so all I have to do is paste that in. It's going to take a minute because it's going to download it and install it. So it says pulling manifest. My computer might, you know, my video might get a little choppy here. I should get a much faster, more powerful computer. I've been on the fence, right? Like, I think I want to go team uh, Windows, you know, let me know. I, I don't edit these things, y'all. Uh, I feel there are a lot of stuff that we see out there. Everything's very scripted and overly edited, uh, you know. I just, I just let this go. Um, so yeah, I, I might be on Microsoft, team Microsoft. Co I mean, the Copilot Plus PCs look amazing. Uh, all right, and just like that, with a little chit chat, we're done. All right. So it's, it's downloading it. It's install it. It's, it's pulling all the, uh, I, I guess the manifest. It looks like those are some different uh, repositories. And then it says success. And then it just says end message or slash question for help. It might just be question. Okay, there we go. So when you run this, this gives you the set of commands, but you don't even have to do that. So I can say, right, like show model information. So show, uh, let's see if it gave it to me. Okay. So, okay. There's a lot of different ones. So I can say shows slash info. There we go. Llama 3.2. So we know we're running it 
Perfect. Let's say, sup. What's going on? Not much. How are you? Uh, so tell me a joke. All right. I uh, love that. What do you call a fake noodle and impasta? All right. Here's where this is powerful, y'all. All right. So you see I'm on the internet, right? Uh, so here I'm on the website, youreverydayai.com. Okay. So now I'm going to turn my internet off. Okay. There we go. Now guess what? I have no internet, right? Uh, I got nothing. Let me go back on this meta. Hit refresh. No internet. But guess what? The model still works. Let's bring back up our terminal. It keeps hiding behind me. All right. So now I'm going to say, uh, tell me about LLMs. There you go. So you see, I am not pulling from a cloud server. So that's what you do. Essentially, I'm oversimplifying it here. Uh, but when you're using like a chat GPT or a Claude, you're essentially pinging their servers and you're running everything online, right? So there's pros and there's cons to that. One, you know, you get a little nice interface and you get to work all with all the third party tools. It's, I mean, obviously there's a ton, but you know, privacy and security are the other things, right? Uh, and here's the reality. If, if you're on a flight, or, or maybe, you know, sometimes I like to turn the internet off and type and focus. This would actually be great for me, uh, right? Because you do not need the internet and it is just running locally on my machine. All right, so uh, I have a couple of different prompts that I sometimes do to test models, all right? I'm not gonna do them all because it's gonna take a little while. All right, so here's what I'm doing. Ready? Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit, all right? So you can read this. So. I'm gonna do some that sometimes these models get wrong and I'm gonna see if this new 3B model gets it right. So I said, I just woke up with six apples and three bananas. Yesterday, I ate a banana and two apples. This morning, I will eat one apple and no bananas. However, I don't really like apples and one banana may turn brown tomorrow. Assuming nothing else changes, how many apples and bananas will I have tonight? All right, so let's see how it does. All right, so cool. It looks like it's going through step by step. You love to see chain of thought on a local open source model that's only 3 billion parameters. All right, so it got it wrong, unfortunately. Uh, so the correct answer would have been five bananas and three apples. So uh, again, I do these tests to see how uh, capable models are. These are not scientific. These are just some fun ones. Some of these I made up. Some of them are kind of ones that have been around on the internet. All right, so that's not right. So let me do the next one. A man... Uh, a man and his dog uh, are standing on one side of the river. There's a boat with enough room for one human and one animal. How can a man get across with his dog in the fewest number of trips? Very few models get this right. I think 01 from OpenAI is the only one. All right, so it says three trips. That's wrong. All right, so, uh, so far, 0 for 2. Not surprising. This is the smaller model. Let's see this one. I would assume this gets it right. Uh, if it takes three hours to dry 10 t-shirts in the sun, how long will it take to dry 30 t-shirts in the sun? Uh, so let's see, it's going through, thinking it's step by step. All right, so not great. All right, it got this one wrong. Uh, this should have been three hours, right? Assuming that you have enough room to put all 30 shirts, it's gonna take the same amount. So, uh, so far, not super impressive with this model, uh, but that's all right. That's why we do some very unofficial uh, unofficial tests. Let's do this one. If you have a single match and you walk into a room with an oil lamp, a candle, and a fireplace, which do you light first? Uh, it says the answer is the fireplace. Eh, no. Uh, let's see. It says if you light the candle first, if you light the fireplace first, if you uh, light the oil lamp first. So technically, you would strike the match first, theoretically, right? Unless it gives you some some reasoning, right? Like, oh, well, actually the fireplace uh, because it's on a switch, right? Uh, so didn't really get that right. So let's see, let's see if we can get one right. My gosh, all right. So not super impressed yet. So what color is the airplane's black box? Uh, the correct answer is it doesn't have a specific color. Uh, so generally black boxes are bright orange. All right. Uh, let's, let's try just one more. All right. We're not doing a full model rundown so far. Not super impressed. Again, this is the smaller model. So it did a good job telling us about large language models, right? It, get, it got all that right. These ones are supposed to be tricky and they're supposed to trip up, uh, large language models, but this is the smaller variety. So I'm saying, please give me seven jokes that end in the word blue. Two should be about animals. 
three should be about some other topic in the body of this chat. So we'll see if it, if it can reference the context window and then saying you can make up the other two. So I mainly want to see, will it tell me seven jokes? Will they actually be jokes? And will they end in the word blue? That's what I'm really looking for here. All right. So it's sorting them out by animal jokes. Okay, got that right. Why did the cow join a band? Because it wanted to be a musician and play music that was blue. All right, that's fine. All right, so it's it's at least uh, they end in blue. That's good. The other topics ends in blue. So it technically only got uh, five jokes. It didn't give us all seven. So got that part wrong. Uh, it did get this piece about you know other things in the body of the chat. We talked about computers. It technically just talked about cows. I don't think we talked about uh, pizza or anything, but it did. They didn't end in blue. So, are the results of this model great? Um, is is it going to solve uh, common kind of uh, you know brain busters uh, right that stump up other large language models? No, it's not doing very well. But this is uh, Meta's smaller model, right? This is their um, their three B model. So. Uh, not super impressive. I've tested uh, the old 8B. It did much better, but hey, that's a quick overview of what's new. Don't write it off because um, I'll, I'm guessing the 11B and the 90B models are going to be very impressive. One last thing as I wrap this up here, let's go to meta.ai. Uh, let's move this over. I doubt that this is updated, but probably this will be the best way. Uh, I'm guessing they should have this available soon, uh, having 3.2 in here. Oh, and just like that, it's out. So I'm going to have to do another uh, review on 4.2 anyways. All right, so I'll link that video here. But there you go. Here's at least what's new and how to install uh, one of the models locally on your machine. I hope this was helpful. I know we went into a lot. I'll have, uh, now that this is available now, it wasn't right before I started. So I'm going to go review now the 405B model for Llama 3.2. And hey, there's the answer that we didn't even have before. So apparently there is a 405B model, which is that making sense, y'all? Because when I look on the page, I'm not seeing a 405B. Yeah, that's under 3.1. So yeah. It's it's interesting. I'll have to see. I'll have to see even uh, what this is because uh, yeah, for 3.2, it only mentioned 90B and 11B unless they updated 405B without multimodal capabilities. I'll let you guys know. All right, we'll see you back for another one.